Hi, I hope you're all doing well. So today I thought we would work on doing some of the foreground bits where we've already done the background. Because Philippa always says, make sure you do the background elements first and then the foreground, <laughs> always in that order. So because we've already done in this little section the stems, I thought we would, could move on and do some of the oak leaves. I thought we'd start with this oak leaf here. I'm excited to do this because it's similar to some of the ones we've already done so we're still on familiar territory from, from what we've already done. It's still a little bit of a safety blanket so I'm looking forward to trying this and hopefully improving on the last ones too. Hopefully I've learned something from the past few. So I've got my thread already, it's already on and it, I've made sure it's the right length from the from the tip of your little finger to the elbow so I know Philip will be, be watching this and making sure that I'm doing it right. So. To start with, I'm just going to check the, <laughs> the instructions again. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to do. I'm going to go out, and I'm going to make sure that I cover the blue line because I've noticed on some of the last ones that I've done that I haven't quite gone over the blue line, and every so often you can just see a little bit of the line. So I'm making sure that I cover that today. <laughs> Just a little short stitch. Lost my thread. <laughs> I like to follow Philippa's line guides on the linen and then go back and fill spots in i'm not sure if that's the right way to do it but i find that's the easiest way for me to find the right direction because it's telling you which way to get your stitch to go and i just go back through the instructions also say start doing one side of the leaf and then go to the other don't swap over So I have found previously when we've done leaves I've sometimes struggled getting the direction right which is why I've started to make sure that I really do follow the lines already on the linen. So I'm just going back over where things look a little bit gappy or there's not a blue line or there is a blue line showing because we don't really want a gappy leaf it doesn't doesn't add to the effect that we're wanting and the good thing is that the more we keep going over it kind of the more raised it gets and the more character it has I'm going to say character makes it each one unique oh. just really thread that like that and then I'll just do a quick seeding stitch here so I can change the thread and we'll go down this side in the first colour and then I will come back to you when we start to put the second colour in for the shading is that I'm having a slight bit of trouble getting the thread up. That's because we've just had a voice note, a voice message from Philippa with some tips and where I've gone wrong in the stem stitch. But one of them is, well, she'll explain it in a minute, but to keep my left hand under the throat and my right hand on top and pass the needle through, which if you've been watching these videos and have seen me try that with the French knot, I do struggle with. So I'm gonna keep trying with this whilst we listen to Philippa's voice note. 
Just one few notes to Katie while she's stitching the rather ambitious tree of life and uh, making a great job of it on the videos. Thank you very much for doing this, Katie. Um, one or two things have just cropped up and one of them is I would start at the top of the stem and work down and always start with the outside of the curve because when you come up on the inside of the loop you know you hold the loop to the left hand side if you were starting at the top and coming down towards you so the um so the stem was vertical to your view then you start at the top so you start in the flower and work towards the hummock and every time you make a stitch you'd flip the the loop over to the outside of the curve. So that would be, in this case, on the left side of the curve. Then you bring your needle up to the inside of that and drop the loop. Now, you've started on the right hand side. So you started on the inside of the curve of the, of the shape and you've also started from the bottom up. And so that kind of doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> I think if you, I can't, I can hardly explain why, but um, without actually demonstrating, which I'd like to do. But um, I think the best thing is if you could cast on in the flower and begin coming down the outside of the curve. I may be too late for this one, but uh, for the next one, please just try that. So always begin your stem stitch on the outside of a curve. And then when you're working the next line of stem stitch, you'll find it so much easier because the loop for the next line of stem stitch flips over the work you've already done, but you come up on the clean side, on the right hand side. So hopefully this will help you. The other point I was going to make is that you're, you need to learn to work hand to hand. So I want you to go back to looking at the stem stitch on my video or how to use a frame type of um, video because actually you only keep your hand on the top you see if you go down with your 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 right handed so if you're going down with your right hand as you go down you can use your second finger you can use your middle finger to hold the loop to one side and just keep your left hand underneath the frame at all times now I'm right-handed and I keep my right hand on the top of the frame. It might be more comfortable for you to use your right hand underneath. I can see you're pretty ambi ambidextrous already, but this will really, really engage your brain <laughs> on both sides. I know you're a highly intelligent girl with a law degree, but honestly, it it really helps um, uh, to, to actually just keep one hand on the top and one hand underneath. And you might need to just go back to doing some seeding stitches somewhere just to practice that technique. So you're not tempted to keep whizzing your hand to the top because apart from anything else, it, you sort of overhandle the wool if you do that. And it's really hot in Britain at the moment. We're actually, you know, heading up towards 28 degrees, even in Appleby, which is hot for us, to be honest. This is the top temperature we normally would ever make but um, it's sort of slightly close and thundery which is very unusual for this area as well so Katie just I'm being really bossy here but please give it a go thank you very much so it's taken me a little bit longer to do but I can see that it's already making a bit of a difference I don't know if it's because it's slowed me down or the technique as well so thank you so much Philippa for that because the only way we're going to get better is by learning from Philippa, isn't it? And I really, really appreciate that feedback. I definitely find it easier if I've got my right hand underneath and my left hand stitching. Hopefully I'll start finding French knots easier now too, but I'm getting used to having one hand under the frame and one hand on top. Plus my arm's not going to get as tired from going up and down all the time. I have to 
to go back and fill in some of these holes, these little gaps I've made. So I've finished with the two colours and you can really see a difference where Philippa's advice has come in on this little bit here. I think you can tell I think you can tell the difference. It looks better, which, which is what we want, really. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the stem into there. And I'm going to go away and really practice doing the stem stitch and the seed and stitches, practicing the way that Philippa has said. And then on Thursday, in Thursday's video, we're going to come back to doing these stems and, and do them the right way this time instead of the wrong way. And we will take Philippa's advice and we will realise how silly we were to go the wrong way. So I will see you on Thursday.